It has devastated our city, but also brought prosperity. And at the end of the day, it's why San Antonio even exists. If you think about it, the San Antonio River defines our community. But at the same time, not one of us would willingly jump into the waterway we all value so much. That's because we have a pretty good idea of what's in there, and it's not pretty. For this case, that explains Justin Horn takes us inside a lab to explore just how polluted the river is and answers the question, will we ever be able to swim in the San Antonio River? We have a trash problem. You might say that step one is admitting you have a problem, but we've known about our trash issue for years. Change takes time. And that trash isn't being done by me or you, it's all of us. No one ever wants to say I'm part of the problem, but we all are. That's true, but it's not just trash that makes the San Antonio River a lesson in biochemistry. And to understand it better, let's float our way back to the beginning. This is the historic source of the water that feeds to the river. In the middle of the University of Incarnate Word, the Blue Hole stands as an icon of San Antonio history. After all, this is likely where civilization began in the area. It was a prolific spring. And you'll actually get this blue, um, iridescent kind of water flowing out of here. It's really magical. Magical, yes, but only on rare occasions. These days, it's mostly dried up. you got to have an aquifer level of 672 feet or more for this to flow. So then the question becomes, where does the water in the San Antonio River that we see around the Riverwalk, where does it come from? For many years, it came from wells, but then we realized the aquifer needed protecting. So for the last 20 years, the primary source of the Riverwalk water and the water going downstream has been reclaimed water. Now that can all change when it rains. We get a lot of rainwater in. These springs do flow every couple years as well. But it, predominantly, when you're on the Riverwalk having a margarita, that's reclaimed water for the most part and the zoo well making up most of the flow of the river. A fluid water, as it's called, can make up as much as 90% of the water in the river. And while it comes from things like sewer plants, it happens to be very clean. when we place it under the uh, UV lamp. If it fluoresces brighter than that, then it will be positive for E. coli. So then why, when tested in the San Antonio River Authority lab, is the water from the river glowing? No, it's not radioactive, but tests which are done here often glow when E. coli is present. You've probably heard of this rather unfriendly bacteria which can have bad results for you and I if ingested. And that E. coli gets in our river from, well, you've probably guessed by now, the polite term is excrement. If you're not picking up after your pet, then that the excrements are being flushed into the river and that's the source of E. coli. It's not just Fido's fault though. Animals of all kind contribute, including feral hogs who use the river as their personal restroom. And ducks, that's why they tell you not to feed the ducks. And how do we know that? This machine in the River Authority lab can break down whose gut that E. coli came from. So, circling back to the whole swimming thing. The reason why there's more of the concern as far as pollutants go is because there are uh, elevated levels of bacteria, mostly E. coli bacteria, in largely in downtown San Antonio. And this is an important point. While you can't swim in the river in San Antonio, that's not necessarily the case farther downstream. The water quality does get better as you go downstream, as you get away from urban city centers. One of the biggest reasons is, is stormwater runoff. You have the accumulation on streets, on sidewalks, on lawns, uh, parks. Yes, while rainfall is a good thing in most cases, it's not good, however, when it comes to water quality. It helps to wash all of San Antonio's nastiness into the river. We can actually have pretty good water quality in these long drought periods, but the minute it rains, the water quality goes horrible. Now that we know what's in it, what happens, and we've all thought about it, if you're walking along the river walk, you trip and fall in. You should stand up, it's pretty shallow. Right, but are we going to get sick? You're not gonna get sick. Um, you know, if you jump in the river and you take a few gulps of water, things might not be as good, but you're not gonna get sick just from falling in the river walk. Then what about the species that call the river home? You've likely seen someone fishing in the river. Are the fish safe to eat? It's completely safe to eat fish in our system. 
The only exception is there is a about a 15 or 20 mile stretch of Leon Creek that does have an impairment for edible fish tissue. So meaning you should not eat fish out of the lower portions of the Leon Creek. But every other water body in our basin is, is considered safe for consuming fish. These water quality issues, by the way, are not just a San Antonio problem. We are certainly not alone in, in the, the urban, urban water quality issues. It is something that every single major city in the country deals with. And the good news, San Antonio is headed in the right direction. You talk to some people who have, you know, horror stories from 34, 40, 50 years ago about what the river was and where we are now is 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 light years beyond what what it was again many many years ago much of that thanks to moves taken by the community and the san antonio river authority including inside their lab here where water testing occurs daily the functions of the lab are, are critical because they really tell you are all the other actions and decisions you're making and actions you're taking are they impacting the river in a meaningful way actions like the habitat restoration along the mission reach and the River Authority's new campaign, Don't Let Litter Trash Your River. A recent report card from the River Authority overall gave the San Antonio River a B, but it did receive an F for flood insurance coverage and public trash. Awareness leads to action, action leads to advocacy, where someday none of us would ever, ever think to throw something on the street, because we know that street will go to a curb inlet, that curb inlet to a pipe, and that trash will make its way eventually to some creek or tributary that goes to the San Antonio River. Meaning someday, just maybe more of the San Antonio River will be swimmable. I'm an optimist, so uh, you know I, I hope that there's something in the near future. We often are at recreational standards that absolutely would allow you to go canoeing and kayaking, what we call secondary recreation. But the primary, when you swim, you put your head underwater, we're not there yet. But we do have a dream. That's sort of our big dream is where and how can we make the river more swimmable? Lots of knowledge about our river right there. For more episodes like this one, scan the QR code on your screen. You see it right now. It'll take you directly to the KSAT Explains page on KSAT.com.